Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, December 24th. We were working the day watch out of burglary division. The boss is Captain Bernard. My partner's Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Hi, Joe. Hi. Christmas cards, huh? A little late, aren't you? Well, I was going to send them out Monday, but we had that steak out. You ought to get married, Joe. Yeah? It's the only system. Faye does all that stuff for me. Laundry, mails, cards. Only system. Might help. You got a big stack there. I ought to cut down the list. Look at this here. Upholstery shop. Yeah? They send me a card every year. I never get anything upholstered. Faye and I ought to go over our list. Cut off a few names. I brought in your present. Want to open it now? No, I'll wait. I always open a couple a day before. Why? Well, it'll put you in the spirit ahead of time. I opened Phil's this morning. Who's he? Faye's brother in Denver. Gave me a magazine, one of those funny ones. What do you mean, a comic book? No, one of those funny ones, you know. No, I don't, Frank. Well, some of the pages have holes in them. You look through and there's a picture on the next page. Oh, yeah, I've seen those on the newsstand. They have cloth pasted in. Cloth? In the ads. If you want to buy a suit, they have a sample right there. You mean you can feel it? Reach right out and feel it. It was one for $200. A suit? Sure. Cloth comes from Scotland. What's it made out of, solid gold? No, they got a special kind of goat over there. It's real smooth. Not a goat, Frank. A sheep. Well, it's a special kind of sheep, then, because a suit costs $200. You gonna get one? I told Faye. She said, wear the sample. Anything doing? Fanning and Pryor were in on that market holdup. They come up with anything? Pound of air, nothing else. I hope it stays quiet. I got more shopping to do. I finished. What'd you get, Ann? Stationary set, some paper and envelopes, leather binding. Joe, you'll never learn. Well, what's the matter? No woman wants a stationary set. Get her something personal. Well, it's got her initials on it. No, no. You want something more sentimental, romantic. What'd you get, Faye? It's different in her case. What'd you get, Faye? Sewing machine. That's romantic. Well, it isn't a way. Why don't you buy her a catcher's mitt? Burglary Friday. Yes, that's right. You have the right department. All right, Father, we'll be right down. No, you can tell us about it there. Goodbye. The old mission church, they've had a theft. Collection money? Statue of the child Jesus. <laughs> Frank and I checked out of the office and rode over to the church at the corner of Sunset Boulevard and Main Street, near the Union Station. It was an old church that was there before there was a Union Station or trains to come into a station. The Padres from down in Mexico built it. The devout Mexicans in town still attended services there. Ten oh five a.m. We asked for Father Xavier Rojas, who had communicated with us. We were told he was inside. We found Father Rojas up near the sanctuary. He told us about the crib. It was a $70 duplication of the scene at Bethlehem. The parishioners had taken up a collection for it 31 years ago. It was put up every year on December 22nd and taken down after the holy season. It was beautiful, except that one of the shepherds had lost an arm, a sheep was old and cracked, 
and the infant Jesus was missing. I'm sorry to bother you, man. All right, Father. Especially now, the holiday season. We cash our checks, Father. You want to tell us what happened? Or what you think happened? I discovered the statue was missing right after the 6 o'clock mass. You say the 6? Yes. I started over to the rectory and stopped by the crib. Was the statue there before mass? I don't know. But it was there last night. How late is the church open? All night. You leave it wide open so any thief can walk in? Particularly thieves, Sergeant. You say it was there last night, Father. How late? 10 or 11 o'clock. We had confessions. No one saw it after that? One of the altar boys, he says it may have been there. He thinks it was. Did he see it? He's not sure. What's his name? Pardon me. Here's the schedule. You'll find the names for every mass there. Was there a big crowd at the 6 o'clock mass, Father? Not too many. Seven's the big one. People on their way to work. Did anyone stay after Mass, did you notice? Not especially. I came back here, took off the vestments. I suppose it was 10 or 15 minutes before I went back in the church. It was empty then? No, people were coming in for the 7 o'clock. Are these the older boys, James Cornine and Joseph Heffernan? That's right. Joe's the one who mentioned it might have been there. Did you check with the other priests, Father? Before I called you. None of them knows anything about it. Just for a check on the pawn shops, how much is the statue worth? In money? Well, that's the point in pawn shops, Father. Only a few dollars. We could get a new one, but it wouldn't be the same. We've had children in the parish. They've grown up and married. It's the only Jesus they know. We understand. And we've had children who died. It was the only Jesus they knew. So many of the people who come here are simple people. They wouldn't understand, Sergeant. It would be like changing the evening star. We'll do our best, Father. That's why it would mean so much to have it back for the first mass on Christmas. It's not very long, Father. Less than 24 hours. If anything turns up here, you know where to get in touch with us. Yes. Sad, isn't it? How's that? In so short a time, men learn to steal. Yes, but consider us, Father. Us? If some of them didn't, you and I'd be out of work. Ten fifty a.m. We notified pawn shop detail. We gave him a description of the missing object, the time and the place of theft. A few minutes later, Frank and I checked out the two altar boys. The first one, James Cornine, said that he knew nothing about it. After mass, he'd gone out the sacristy door and come straight home for breakfast. The second one, Joseph Heffernan, was not at home. His father said he had a part-time job. He'd have him get in touch with us after lunch. By 11.30 a.m., we'd run out of book procedure. We had a man to find. Our only clue, he'd been to church. We're police officers. My name's Friday. This is my partner, Frank Smith. Pleased to see you. Caught me in the middle of a big chess match. Where's your partner? Up in San Jose. We've been playing for years. I see. You know, we do it through the mail. I send him a move, he sends me one. You Mr. Flavin? How do you know? We never met. Your name's on the window out front. Mr. Flavin, we checked the other two religious stores in this neighborhood. They're closed. This is the best one anyway. 50% European items. We're checking the stores around the Mission Church. For what? Statue of the Child Jesus. Do you have one we could look at? Sure. No, sir, a larger one. You don't want a larger one, unless it's for a church. That's where you want a larger one. Could we see it, please? Not my due to butt in, but unless you live in a big place, this will make your living room all a kilter. Yes, sir. Do most of the people who go to the mission church trade here? Good many of them, especially the kids. Why kids? More religious. Check on yourself. See if kids aren't more religious than you. Might be so. That's what's wrong with the world. Oh, I don't mean you're wrong with it. Everybody. Yes, sir. What if we could stick to the point, Mr. Flavin? Sure. A lot of people from the mission church come in here. Do people ever come in and sell back a religious article? Like a prayer book or rosaries? Yes, sir. Second hand, you mean? Yes, sir. Not since I've ever been around. It's silly. Why? 
People don't have religious articles so they can get rid of them. They have them so they can have them. But if a man had a statue and wanted to sell it, he'd come to a place like this. Sure, but he wouldn't want to sell it. He would if it was stolen. No, sir. If a man was to steal a statue, he'd be crazy or something like that. The only place he'd want to go is where crazy people are. You may be right, Mr. Flynn. I don't know what you fellas are looking for, but if it's somebody who stole a statue, he's crazy and you won't find him. You won't find him as long as you live, or in a million years. That should cover it. We continued to check religious stores out as far as Van S. We asked the same questions. The owners gave us the same answers, but none of them were as encouraging as Mr. Flavin. Frank and I had lunch and reported back to the office. It was 1.30 p.m. I just checked for you in the lunchroom. Well, we've been out of that theft at the mission. May get some action on the Patterson case. We locate him? I think he's on the bus from Sacramento. Well, that means the Bakersfield police. We'll wait and see. One of you fellas, Sergeant Friday? He is. I'm Joe Heffernan. My father said you wanted to see me. Well, sit down, son. You didn't have to come in. A phone call would have worked. My father said to get on over. He says that any kid that uses phones is lazy. We want to ask you about this morning. You serve 6 o'clock mass? Yes, sir. I'm senior boy, so I get the 6. You're senior and you take the early trick? Yes, sir. That way, if you receive communion, you get to have breakfast sooner. Father Rojas says you think the statue was there before mass. I didn't look, but I have a feeling it was there. A feeling? You know, how you have a feeling about something, but you're not sure. Did you stay around long after Mass? I put out candles and hung up my surplus. How long would that take? About five minutes, maybe. Did any of the people at Mass stay on? Some moms do, especially ladies. Oh? Maybe they don't finish in time, or else they start new prayers. I don't know. So when you left, there were still some women there? No, sir. That was at first. After I went back to the sacristy, there was only this one man. What man? He comes at 6 o'clock all the time. Do you know his name? No, sir. But he works down in Olive, you know, paint shop, where they paint signs. Could you describe him? Sort of medium. He was wearing a suit that didn't match. Didn't match? You know, different pants than coat. How about his age? Oh, he's pretty old. Take a guess. About 40, maybe. There's nothing particular about him. Then why'd you notice him? I've seen him before. And the bundle, I guess. The bundle? Out in front. I saw him when he was coming out. He had this bundle, and he almost dropped it. How large a bundle? It's hard to say. Come on, son. Was it large or small, the size of the statue? About that big. Yes, sir. We located the sign shop. The suspect didn't work there anymore, but we discovered his name was Claude Stroop. We found out where he lived. 2.25 p.m., we arrived there. It was a hotel for men, mostly old men, mostly down and outers. It was called the Golden Dream. Police officers, we're looking for Claude Stroop. Hope Claude didn't get in any trouble. So do we, is he in? No. He's got room 307. You can check if you like. We'll take your word. Were you on this morning? Hmm? Yeah, the early shift. Well, we don't have shifts. My uncle owns the place. I'm the shift. Did Stroop spend last night here? Came in about 11. When did he leave this morning? Around 6, maybe before. He come back after? 8 o'clock or so. Then left. Supposed to be back at 10. And pulls this trick. What trick? Our program. He knows the other fellas need him. Program? They're here at the hotel. Every Christmas we have a program. Put up a tree and sing. They're mostly old fellas. Singing like that makes them remember back when they were kids. Then Jimmy Finn comes on. Jimmy Finn? He shares number 409. His family once had a lot of money, so he tells the fellas about it. Stories about Christmas. How they had this big log and his grandfather used to start it up. And After dinner, everybody turned over his plate and there underneath was a $20 gold piece. Brand new one. When Stroop came in this morning, did he have a bundle? I didn't see him come in. You said you saw him. I saw him go out after, but not come in. When was that? Eight. If you want to look for a bundle, I could give you his key. We don't have a warrant. Oh, it's all right. I know about police. It's all right with me. It's not with us. I didn't mean that. I, I just meant it was all right with me. Good King Wenceslas, look down on the feast of Stephen. When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even, brightly shone the moon that night, though the 
cross was cruel when the poor man came in sight gathering winter fuel. This is the last rehearsal. I got most of the songs down pat. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, that's why it's a shame Claude isn't here. He's tenor and they need him to make it sound just right. Does Troop have a job? No, sir. He used to have jobs. Not much lately, though. Did he say where he was going? No, he should have. The fellas need him. When he comes in, will you call us? Sure, and uh, not say anything to him. Huh? That's right. I hope it's nothing serious for Claude. The fellas' troubles ought to be over. Troubles? Way back. It wouldn't count now. Tell us anyway. Well, I don't know much about it. As much as you know. Now, come on. Was well, something back where he used to live. He robbed somebody or something. What else? That's all. It was a long time ago, way far back. But he forgot it all, the robbing and everything. No, not quite. Hmm? He remembered it this morning. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all. <laughs> We ran Claude Stroop's name through R&I. If he'd been booked anywhere, we had no record of it. At least not under that name. 4.15 p.m., pawn shop detail reported back. Up until that time, no object resembling the statue of the child Jesus had been turned in. Patterson's on that Sacramento bus. I thought Bakersfield had it. They were supposed to confirm. They did. Off work station. What about Fanning and Pryor? They're still out. Well, they'll be back soon. When's the bus arrive? Six o'clock. Well, there's plenty of time for them to make it. There's more time for you. We're still on that path. Can it wait? No. What is it? Ten, fifteen dollar statue? When's the price determine a case? I realize it's a church statue, but that doesn't give it priority. It's important to them, Captain. Joe and I promised to get it back. What do you got on it? Nothing much. And why are you so big hearted? Burglary Friday. When? No. Don't say anything. No. Right. It's Claude Stroop. He just walked into the hotel. He's our suspect. Nobody's leaked to him? No. You'll keep. You can run him down tomorrow. It'll be too late then. They need it for the first mass in the morning, Skipper. It's kind of a big thing for them. I'm sorry. I can't juggle details around so you can get a statue back. If there's time later on, we'll do our best. Yes, sir. You better get over to the station. Yes, sir. Will you call Father Rojas over at the mission? Why? Tell him we're too busy to work on that statue. But we'll do it later. Tomorrow or when we get a chance. Why can't you call him? Well, we better get over to the station. If Patterson's on that bus, we don't want to miss him. All right, I'll call him. Righty. Yeah. I can send Fanning in priority. Might as well stand that other thing. Whatever you say, Captain. Four forty-three p.m. We arrived at the Golden Dream Hotel. The desk clerk was right. Claude Stroop looked like a man who'd had his troubles at bargain rates. Your name, Claude Stroop? Yes, sir. Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. I didn't do anything against the law. Honest, I didn't do anything against it. You haven't been accused. I want to take you downtown. We'd like to talk to you. No, sir, I'm not going. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to talk to anybody. You're half wrong already. Five fifteen p.m. We returned Stroop for interrogation. He kept his word. He refused to talk. 6.05 p.m., Frank called Faye, told her that he'd be a little late. Stroop didn't move for a whole hour. He sat and stared, but he didn't talk. 6.40 p.m., we got a final report from pawn shop detail. The shops were closed. There was no statue. Stroop still hadn't talked. Don't you ever want to go home, Stroop? If I was to talk, he wouldn't let me go. Depends on what you'd say. I'd say it wrong, and I wouldn't get home. You won't this way either. I'd like to go, you can bet on that. This is the seventh year we had the program, and I never missed a one. Not a single one. Why don't you tell us what happens, Drew? How would I know you'd let me go? You wouldn't. I might as well anyway. All right, what happened from mass on? Well, there was mass. I came out and started down toward the hotel. Back up. I left my stuff at the hotel, and then I picked up George's car. I didn't steal it. He said I could have it any time I wanted. Only this time I didn't ask him. 
I took it and started out. Yeah. I should have asked, but I just didn't. I went over to Grand Avenue for the Christmas bulbs for this fellow sells them secondhand. It was coming out of the lot, but I did it. Yeah. The bumper must have caught the other car. Didn't leave too big a dent, but there was this long scratch. I got out and tried to wipe it off with my handkerchief. You know, spit on it like. Only didn't do no good. I didn't think anybody saw. I don't know how you fellows found out about it. I'll check auto records. Right. Stroop, we didn't bring you down here to talk about that. You didn't? No. There's a statue missing from the church. A statue of the child Jesus. You mean I took it? You took a bundle out of church. Yes, sir. That was my other pants for the program tonight. I had a place sewed up and there was a button on it. You can check. But I wouldn't take a statue. I don't think you would either. He's clear at auto records. Go on home. For the program? You mean it's all right? Good night, Stroop. Good night. Merry Christmas. Where to? Well, I don't know. We could stay and work on it tonight. Wouldn't do any good. We won't find it. I don't think so. No use kidding the priest. Build his hopes up. Might as well go tell him now. Christmas. 7.27 p.m. We arrived at the old Mission Plaza church. Frank told Father Rojas how it was, that we couldn't get the statue back by morning, but that we'd keep trying during the week. He said he understood. We told him we had to get on. Paquito? Padre Rojas? It's Paco Mendoza, a boy from the parish. Ask him where he found it. Donde lo encontraste? No le encontré, le cogí esta mañana. He didn't find it, he took it. Why? Por qué? Todos los años Paquito rezó por un camisito rojo. Este año Paquito rezó al niño Jesús. Yo prometí al niño Jesús el primer viaje en mi camioncito. He says all through the years he's prayed for a red wagon. This year he prayed to the child Jesus. He promised that if he got the wagon, the child Jesus would have the first ride in it. Tendrá el diablo para llevar a Paquito. He wants to know if the devil will come and take him to hell. That's your department, Father. No el diablo. Jesús ama a Paquito mucho.
understand how he got that wagon today. Don't kids wait for Santa Claus anymore? It isn't from Santa Claus. The firemen fix old toys and give them to new children. Paquito's family, they're poor. Where are they, Father? <laughs>